This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a big Tuesday on tap for today because not only do we have seven games across the NBA, but also this is our final day to lock in bets uh, before the tournament begins for the Farmers Insurance Open in the PGA. So we are going to have Brandon Gadula on for today to break down his thoughts on both of those, talking some basketball, talking some golf, and getting you set for a successful Tuesday night. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Brandon Gadula. Check him out on Twitter at Gadula13. He is a senior managing editor of NumberFire.com. Brandon Busy week for you with golf beginning on a Wednesday to avoid overlap with the conference championships. So how are you doing today? Oh, yeah, Jim. With PGA back, it's always busy because the NBA don't stop. Uh, it never stops. It's it's relentless. We know that. And once the PGA Tour starts back up, that is also uh, relentless. So basically nonstop with those two sports specifically uh, for me. Do you prefer PGA beginning on a Wednesday so you're done with stuff, don't think about it, or is it more hectic for you to jam everything in right away? I mean, I guess your stuff's usually up on Monday anyway. Well, it just depends on, you know, how, you know, when we get, like, slates, uh, yeah. when we get when we get odds, certain things. I mean, odds are still pretty slow uh, for this week for a lot of, uh, a lot of places uh, for the farmers, but I think I probably just prefer the Thursday because... Mm-hmm. In the event that I don't get things all sorted on Monday, I'm still, you know, free and clear for like another two days. Well, we're going to get you set for the Wednesday tea times and get you set for the Farmers Insurance Open later on. We'll start with NBA in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Broke down my opening thoughts on the conference championships in the NFL yesterday. Broke down. What my numbers say about uh, the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes being banged up, both if I assume he's healthy and both if I assume he is banged up, uh, ran through the process there. And then also talked about Niners versus Eagles. That is up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page. So just search for uh, FanDuel on YouTube or search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NFL playoffs are back. And here is the easiest way to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers, join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first First $5 bet. FanDuel is all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So, football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Make every moment more with FanDuel official sports betting partner. Of the NFL must be 21 plus and president select stays first online, a real money wager only bonus issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Connecticut. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-89-9789. Now, moving to the NBA. There are a couple of nationally televised games for tonight. We got uh, the Celtics and the Heat, the Clippers at the Lakers. Brand, I know uh, your favorite teams all involved uh, in this one. Teams that have never had injury concerns, never had things in doubt for you to juggle throughout the day. So when you look at these, if people want to lock in bets while they're watching these games tonight, anything you like in these games or are they avoids for you? Well, yeah, thankfully, uh, Miami isn't having the worst injury report of all time uh, tonight. So that that's very helpful. But uh, the Celtics, though, are on a back-to-back. They played at Orlando uh, last night, lost by double digits. Um, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown each played a lot of minutes, uh, 36 or more. So, you know, that's a bit of a concern. However, on 
Uh, no rest this season. The Celtics are seven and zero with an eighty three percent cover rate. They're six and zero in road games on a back to back, four and two against the spread. I don't really look at these numbers in terms of like action ability, but it likes. I like to see uh, that a team can kind of figure things out on a back to back, kind of overcome that game plan accordingly. Um, but with that game last night, there's still no official injury report for Boston. So they're actually a little bit more problematic early in the day uh, than Miami. I would assume they're without Marcus Smart and Malcolm Brogdon again. Al Horford probably sits on the back-to-back. So you got to make adjustments there. Um, statistically, though, they're still a good team without those guys on the floor so long as they have uh, Tatum and Brown. It's not really a huge change to their data, even if it feels like it. Uh, for the Heat, again, shockingly small injury report. Doesn't include any key players. Um the spread currently is Miami minus two. I believe that shifted from one and a half when I looked earlier in the yeah, morning. It's not two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Yeah. So probably not getting uh, a lot of Celtics healthy. I think the line's pretty efficient. Um, that being said, I like the over okay. um, despite maybe some potential absences. So long as we have, you know, Tatum and, and Brown active, uh, Boston's going to be able to score. These teams have played uh, to the over two out of three times already. Um, one of them was a, was an overtime game, but I think the scoring is going to be a little bit better than people probably realize with the injuries. Injuries alone don't always mean that that scoring will be down. Uh, but yeah, over is it still two, uh, 219 and a half? 217 and a half, so it's come oh, so down. It, it's been dropping a lot, um, which yeah. does have me a little bit concerned. But I think it's also one of those games where you look at, you say, you know, back to back, it's Miami at home. Probably, probably like the under, but all the data sort of actually points to the over. So that's probably one where you're waiting to see where it hits like it's nadir and starts to kind of level out. And if it gets to, you know, if it stays at 217 and a half for a while, then I think you can have the confidence to fire on the over. If it keeps on tumbling, that probably says that there is some kind of key thing that's going to be announced later on. Yeah. But as long as it like hits its nadir at some point, I think that it makes sense to, to keep an eye on it. Yeah, but uh, you know, projecting what we know for certain, even even sort of on the skeptical end with uh, that trio that I mentioned for Boston being out, um, my numbers have the over. I, I think that's just one of those like sort of misleading, you know, narr- not really a narrative, but it yeah. sounds like it'd be a, yeah. uh, an under. But the the data likes the over. Yeah, uh, which team for the Clippers and Lakers uh, right now? Clippers are five point favorites. Total in that game is two thirty. So, yeah, the Clippers should be pretty healthy based on their injury report uh, in games with both Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, uh, 11 and 7, 9 and 9 against the spread. So I think the, the odds makers have kind of figured out uh, what this team is, uh, played it pretty evenly. The Lakers are the bigger issue here. They're without Anthony Davis. LeBron James is listed as questionable, which isn't really news, but it's been that for like. 70 straight games it seems like at this yeah point. It, it's a huge shift understandably with and without lebron um with lebron active for this game my numbers would have the lakers as one and a half point underdogs so i'd love uh, just to take the five points with the lakers uh but without lebron their their net rating that i would use goes from basically zero to like a minus 12 they're they're a really bad team without both LeBron and Anthony Davis in key le- key leverage situations. So, you know, it's it's hard to say early in the day. Yeah. Um, and the over under numbers switch based on whether LeBron's active. I would assume that he does play because LeBron's questionable a lot and, and yeah. doesn't miss a whole lot of games. But you know, it's one of those where it you know there's some other games on the slate. I, I know you probably want to like get action to a national televised game, but. For me, I'm not really interested in this one. Yeah. Let's say LeBron is confirmed as in. Would you be willing to take it as long as it stays below that one and a half that you had it at? Or how would you handle that in that situation? Yeah, I mean, we're going to get points anyway, I think, with the Clippers. Like, yeah. it's not going to shift that much. Or, mm-hmm. sorry, with the Lakers. So, it's, yeah. it's, um, it, it's you know, as so long as we're getting points, I'm good with right. it, basically. So, monitoring the total for Boston, Miami, uh, 217 and a half right now. Um, likely looking at the over there if we if that doesn't continue to bat, to, to bottom out um, and then also keeping an eye on the Lakers potentially adding that later on depending on the status of LeBron James but as you mentioned there are plenty of other games on Tuesday night what else do you see on the board right now at FanDuel so we have Bulls Pacers um, that's an interesting one to me uh, Pacers are uh, one and a half point home underdogs 
total of 235 uh, and a half. But my numbers like the under a lot in this one because of the health of Tyrese Halliburton. Without Halliburton, uh, Indiana's offensive rating drops 7.6 points. Their defensive rating improves by 3.2 points, which are both under friendly trends. In eight games without Halliburton, uh, Pacers have gone under 62.5% of the time. Uh, their own um, points per game number drops by 6.3. He's a really good player, and this team just is different with and without him. So I don't think that's fully accounted for with such a high total. And then Dallas taking on the, the Wizards in this one. Uh, Dallas, 7.5 point home favorites. Washington's going to be without Kristaps Porzingis. Dallas is also without Christian Wood, but there's a pretty big difference between like the net net uh, ratings. So basically what you are with a player, what you are without him and like that difference. Uh, if you look at that, that number Porzingis has is a plus 5.6 Wood is a plus 1.0. And so long as they, so long as Dallas has Luka Doncic, their offensive rating is high. It doesn't really matter. So um, they have a 121 offensive rating in games with Luka Doncic, but no, no wood or maxi Kleba. So inject all that into my model. Um, and I think that Dallas uh, wins this one pretty comfortably at home. But right now that number is a seven and a half uh, facing off with the wizards. The wizards obviously making some trades recently, a uh, seven and a half point spread in favor of Dallas. And you talked about the under for the Pacers and the bulls, two thirty five and a half. The number on that one of FanDuel sports, but the under is minus one Oh eight. So Decent little card across the NBA for tonight. Let's talk now about some golf. We got the Farmers Insurance Open coming up this weekend. It is a two-course event at Torrey Pines, the North and the South course. Most of it being played in the South course. What do we need to know about the two courses in play for this week? Yeah, so we should we should focus primarily on the South course, and with that in mind, distance. Uh, it's over seventy seven hundred yards. Um, smaller greens than average, uh, around 500 or sorry, 5,000 square feet on average, according to the GCSAA PG tour average is around 6,000. So that's roughly 83%. So basically small greens, and that does correlate actually with uh, better iron play, but the distance itself is also important. Um, just, it, it's not like, I'm not saying it's the most demanding setup because we have seen this be set up in, in a more difficult fashion uh, for the U S open, but it's not going to play quite like that or anything, but you know, past three winning scores have been either 14 or 15 under. So pretty big deviation from like the 25, 28 under scores we've been seeing, uh, you know, in the swing season and, and to start the, the 2023 calendar year. Um, and if you look at the past winners here, they're generally like either long off the tee and had the short game clicking to sort of be a surprise winner to some degree, or, they're just really, really good overall golfers. Uh, so, you know, with a lot of studs in the field, that kind of does impact how I'm betting the week. Like John Rom's on fire, but he's not the only star in the field. I think it'll it'll probably take a really like true heavyweight to sort of beat him on a course that plays, you know, a lot tougher than what we've been seeing. Uh, so I'm looking at irons, distance, and putting uh, for this week. Tough to putt on these poet greens statistically on the south course and – Again, just kind of an all-around test, and, and that means that you know, long-term form, just overall golfer strength is, is not the worst way to go. I, I don't know how many like long shots we'll see toward the top of the leaderboard come Sunday. And like you said, that is a deviation from what we saw, we've seen the past couple of months. And I think it's important to kind of like have a mental reset at that point um, to kind of reorient yourself with a different kind of setup that we've had here recently. Yeah. Speaking of different setups, that translates to the odds. Uh, the odds of this event at FanDuel Sportsbook, John Rahm, plus 430. Pretty short. I will say he has lengthened. He was yeah. plus 390. So uh, FanDuel uh, giving you a little bit of a break here. But that's short, man. I'm assuming we can't get to Rahm at that number, correct? I can't. Um, I Like, how well, far off are you from that? Like, really far off or no? So, plus four. Plus 430 is 18.9%. I have met 14.9%. That's that's not bad, actually. It's that's not like close. the yeah. it's not the worst once you account for like the fact that that number might be a little bit low. Um, yeah. I don't account for things like course history in my model. If you did, 
it might be around 18.9% for John Rahm. Won the U.S. Open, uh, won the Farmers in the past. Just really good here. He's like on fire and he's doing it. I mean, the iron play itself is not really what's separating him. He's just so good at golf. There's nothing that he doesn't do well. So, like, for me, I can't get there. Um, you know, it's he's shorter than he was last week. But I, I realistically think, like, there's not going to be a whole lot of, like, Davis Thompson's and, and those and, and like Chris Kirk's kind of pushing toward the top late on Sunday. I could be wrong on that. I think it'll kind of be like a two or three guy show off uh, showdown on Sunday. So I'm not going to get there uh, with Rom again. Like if anyone wants to, I'm no longer going to fight it. I'm sick of like avoiding John, Rom. like t- recommending to avoid John Rom at this point. Um, yeah. Plus like it's a tougher course and like sure. the better golfer should separate. So I'm out. Um, he is easily my model's like favorite to win. Yeah. I, I very, I don't often get to like bet or recommend my model's favorite because right. there's a little more to it than just right. <laughs> taking the winner. It's not, it's not straight up or anything. So if you want to bet John Rom, you have every reason to, aside from the odds being a little bit shorter than they probably deserve to be. Now the benefit of having Rom at plus four thirty, where his implied odds are about four percentage points higher than his than his odds in your model is that that in theory should open up value elsewhere um in theory unless they just jack up the hold which you know could happen um any outrights showing value to you right now i do uh like two and they're both toward the top of the board let me guess are we getting xander here yes we are getting xander okay okay knew it all right do you, you have a second guess Oh, um, let me think here. Is this, is your model showing value in this person or are you betting them or do you re- want to recommend them personally? Uh, both. Okay. Uh, JT. No. Fee no. No, he's 12. No, it couldn't be that. Um, Hideki at 33. No. No way. No, that sounded like <laughs> No, the um, model doesn't really love Hideki that much anymore. So I got Xander. I'm gonna just gonna call right. it a win. Okay. Xander's eleven to one. Uh, who is the other person? Will's Alatoris. Oh yeah, okay, that makes total sense. Will's always doing stuff in good fields, and that that helps out a lot. But for Xander, um, I think he's over the back issue based on what he did at the American Express. Uh, T three there really surged, and he says that he doesn't like birdie fests. He does pretty well on them usually. Um, did a lot of damage with the wedges, but we have incomplete shot link data from last week mm-hmm. with a three course rotation. So just two courses or two rounds there. Um, but this is probably a good, uh, I don't want to say like teaching moment cause I'm not trying to claim that I you know know everything, but it's a good reminder that if you just trust long-term data and use that, you don't have to like sweat if Xander had like two good rounds with the wedges. Cause we know long-term He's a good wedge player anyway, so it doesn't yeah. – like, you shouldn't really balk at that too much. Um, but the long-term data has Xander ranked first in the field in true strokes gain, T to green over the past 50 rounds, according to Data Golf. He's got the home game narrative uh, for this week. I was going to ask, it's, what's the bump? What's the bump for home game? He's from San Diego. This is in La Hala. It's basically, you know, his backyard. Uh, played a lot of high school golf here. Hasn't always translated to direct uh, success at Torrey Pines, but he's rounding into form – at the course on the PGA Tour, uh, top 25 in two of the past four years, T2 in 2021, albeit uh, five shots back of Patrick Reed during his uh, infamous embedded ball uh, situation. We can leave it at that. But I do like Xander. And, uh, you know, look, I think that one of these guys is going to have to be the one who beats John Rom at the top. So I'm going to stick with Zalatoris. It's going to be a smaller betting card at the top. Don't really love long shots for this week. Yeah, it's a pretty tough top of the board, pretty tough course. That's just how I'm playing it. So, but for me, uh, Zalatoris makes a lot of sense. Similar to Xander, where I'm no longer concerned about the back. Saw so good ball striking data from him at the American Express and the Century Tournament of Champions. He's top four in strokes gained tee to green, 21st in putting, which the putting is really trending up long term for him. Uh, good results here, two top tens the past uh, two years for him. And so 
if look, it feels like we're fighting John Rom this week, like the field against John Rom. I'd rather uh, go with like Xander or Zalatoris. I will say, uh, if you want to kind of play, like pay the John Rom tax in a different way, Xander was plus seven hundred to be top American. So, um, I'm not saying eleven to one and seven to one are the same thing, but that right. is an option if you're too fearful of of John Rom. <laughs> I mean that makes a lot of sense actually. Just a lot plus seven fifty. Yeah. So um, Zalatoris also gets the home state bump, not the hometown bump because it's a very different part of the state. But he gets the home state bump. Uh, he's from Sam. He's from the northern part of the state, somewhere up there. Uh, but he's fourteen to one. Xander Shoffle eleven to one. I mean Xander, I think makes a lot of sense. Getting confirmation last week that he was healthy, I think, is kind of the big thing for him. What about non outrights? Now the menu here pretty limited thus far especially because we're talking here on a tuesday morning but any you see right now and then any guys you are looking at for non-outright markets once they're posted um even with somewhat limited options i do see some things that look good two in particular uh nationality bets sung jm top asian player uh plus 230 um i think that looks good i think that the odds are too short for both hideki matsuyama who again my model is not in love with um of course where statistically putting is tricky i think that makes enough sense uh, to to shy away from hideki there uh, and see what kim i think also is, is bumped up too much coming off of a win at the sony open really putted well um to a t22 at the american express i know again limited data but um i think that that has kind of changed things in the short term and that sung jm is the better play long term at plus 230 and then uh dean burmister a uh, top South Af- so- South African uh, plus 170. If you just look at the true strokes gained averages among the South Africans in the field over the past 50 rounds, according to data golf, Burmester is a plus uh, 0.73. Dylan Fratelli minus 0.26. MJ Duffy minus 0.34. And Gary Kigo minus 0.76. Big edge to Burmester there. Uh, whenever I see stuff like that, um, you know, my, my, my model likes it too, but you know, that's just confirmation that I think the recent form is telling us that we can go with uh, Burmeister at plus 170 there. Yeah, so Burmeister at plus 170, top South African, Sung J.M., top Asian at plus 230, joining uh, Will Zalatoris 14 to 1 and Xander Shafley 11 to 1 outrights, or the uh, Xander 7 to 1 top American as well. Preference for you between the Xander outright and the Xander top American? Do you prefer the, the just full outright on him, or what do you think? Um, is the, is the American one really just a hedge to get away from Rom? That, that would be, the, that would be it is, okay. is basically if you think Rom wins it or you don't want to sweat like Rom and it's a, a Rom Xander showdown and you yeah. don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah. I, I personally would go with the, the outright, but yeah. I, I'm also afraid sometimes of John Rom. So I don't blame you. <laughs> it's a very fair, I, very fair emotion to have. I think it's personal preference, but I'll stick with the outright. Okay. Well, that sounds like a fun card across the NBA and the PGA for the next couple of days. Uh, get those bets locked in again because the uh, the first tee times for PGA this week will be Wednesday morning. So get those in as soon as you can. That is Brandon Gadula breaking down NBA and PGA for us. Uh, you can find Brandon on Twitter at Gadula13, GDULA13. Brandon, thank you for swinging by for today once again. Good luck to you tonight. We'll talk to you once again in about five minutes over on the DFS side of things. Talk and PGA. Yeah, it's always fun, Jim. Looking forward to it. You can find Brandon's work, his simulations for PGA, and his NBA betting guides over at numberfire.com. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. Almost forgot how to spell my name there for a second. Good start to the day. We'll talk to you once again Wednesday, talking some NBA and NHL with Tom Vecchio. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 